The next theory of our today's course is dialogic theory. The theory explains how public relations practitioners should ethically build quality relationships with publics by having a dialogue with them. So we talked about different kinds of relationships, we talked, we talked about management of relationships, but now we're talking about the quality relationships, really how we should build those relationships in an ethical manner using dialogue. Dialogue refers to a process interpersonal, group and organization public interaction that focuses on honesty, truth and positive regard for the other. It is any negotiated exchange of ideas and opinions. Key authors of the series Pearson, Kent and Taylor. Idea. The main idea of the theory. Organizations should be willing to interact with publics in honest and ethical ways in order to create effective organization public communal channels. Public communication channels. Dialogue includes five, five features. Mutuality, propinquity, empathy, risk and commitment. Let's go and talk about each of them. Mutuality. The recognition of organization public relationships an acknowledgement that, that organizations and publics are inextricably tied together. We are together. We depend on each other. So we must collaborate. Collaboration is when each opens himself to the other person and truly accepts his or her point of view as worthy of consideration. So we don't just blame the person who thinks differently and say, okay, you are not in our uh, community, we don't want to have friendships with you. No. Everyone has an equal opportunity, has an equal right to speak up. And uh, we consider their point of view as worthy of consideration. The next dimension is spirit of mutuality. It's an exercise of power um, uh, control that should be avoided. Basically, participants should feel comfortable discussing any topic. Uh, they should feel that they're going to be free of ridicule if they say something. This is what equal um, mutuality and spirit of mutual equality is. It's when everyone feels comfortable, equal, uh, to discuss what they feel, what they think, um, and um, how they want to proceed together uh, in collaboration, in building a relationship with you. Propinquity. The temporality and spontaneity of interactions with public. Immediacy of presence. Communica communication is in the present, before the decisions are made. So we don't talk to the publics when we already made the decision and now we're going to let them know that we've done what we wanted. No, we communicate with them in the present, before we even make a decision. So the publics would help us to form our decision, to shape it, to make it mutually beneficial. Uh, parties have to have a shared space, a place to communicate, whether it's a website, whether it's a, a place for a meeting on the street or uh, something which was uh, accepted by both parties as a shared place uh, for communication. Temporal flow. Dialogue is rooted in the present but focused on equitable and acceptable f future for all involved. So we're talking about the future, right? We are in the present, we talk right now, but we want both of us to benefit from our interaction. Engagement. Participants are accessible, they give their whole selves to encounters. So you cannot do five things at one time. If you are building relationships and you are communicating right now in this dialogue with another person, you are with him in this dialogue at this very moment. Empathy. Empathy is an atmosphere of support and trust that must exist if dialogue is to succeed. Uh, it's characterized by supportiveness. Dialogue involves creating a climate in which others are encouraged to participate and their participation is facilitated. So we invite people to talk to us. We support them. Okay, you may think differently, but talk to us. Let's talk to each other. Let's decide. Let's, let's think about it. Let's see how we can help each other. Communal orientation. Public relations aims at building communities. Uh, we live in, there, uh, in the world where the whole world is broken into communities, the different ones. And we can uh, think we're in one community or in another community, but in any case, we try to build this community, make it stronger. Uh, and um, 
build relationships between communities as well. Confirmation of public goals and interest. Acknowledging the voice of the other in spite of one's ability to ignore it. Organizations acknowledge that those who do not agree with the organization need to be heard. So even though organizations, they have power, they have resources, they have money, uh, people who usually don't like the products, right, or some one uh, customer, uh, they don't have as much power as the organization does. Social media provides customers with that power, but it's not uh, um, to the same uh, amount as the organization has the power. So even though the organization has the power to ignore what the, what the customer is saying, they should not do it. They should listen and they should work together to solve the problems. Risk. Dialogue is always a risk because interaction with individuals and publics requires interaction on their own terms. So it's vulnerability. Uh, you share information and you don't know where, where this person with your information is going to go. Right? You share your beliefs, you share your desires. Um, you can be ridiculed for what you feel, for what you think. Um, so they make participants vulnerable. Risk um, uh, includes vulnerability. And unanticipated consequences. Uh, communication is unrehearsed, it's spontaneous. You come, you talk to the person you haven't planned, even though you have a strategy and everything in the world. But this moment, right now, you are in the present, you go and talk. It's spontaneous, it's unrehearsed. Recognition of strange otherness. The unconditional acceptance of the uniqueness and individuality of others. Consciousness of the fact that the other is not the same as oneself. No, they should be. People are different. They can be different. We're all different. And it's actually beautiful that we're all different. Uh, so this acceptance of the uniqueness, of the otherness, um, it's also a risk. Uh, commitment. The extent to which an organization gives itself over to dialogue, interpretation and understanding in its interactions with public, with publics. Geniusness. Dialogue is honest and forthright. Uh, commitment to, to conversation. The goal of conversation is mutual understanding and benefit. Commitment to interpretation. Individuals should set aside their differences to understand the positions of others before the positions are evaluated. So basically, you have to state very clearly that you are committing to a conversation and you are committing to understand that another person and you're committing to find that decision, that problem solution that would benefit both of us. Uh, the dialogic theory, um, though we talked right now about the principles and the features, very often applied online. So for a dialogue to happen online, um, it must have dialogic loop, usefulness of information, generation of return visits, the intuitiveness and conservation of visitors. Let's go and discuss each of those uh, principles of a dialogue online. Dialogic loop. Uh, websites should allow publics to query organizations, to allow organizations to respond to questions and concerns. Employees must be trained to respond to online queries and be available to do it. Basically, on your website, there must be um, uh, Q&A questions, right? There must be contact information. Uh, there must be um, opportunity for comments. You have to um, collect this feedback from the people. You have to have a phone, call, a phone so people could call you, right? A chat so people could answer the questions with you. And the employees, of course, because the information overload and uh, different requests that publics have, employees have to be ready to answer those questions. This is especially relevant for such businesses as banking or government or um, um, some health uh, organizations. So this dialogic loop, this continuous interaction, continuous conversation between publics and the organization, which is supported through online communication, online facilities of the website. Usefulness of information. Organizations on their website should post information with general value for all publics, including the statement of the organization's philosophy or mission. 
Information must be useful and transparent. Publics should have an opportunity to sign up for information update the updates. And there must be contact information of organizational members. Usefulness of information. When I come to the website, I expect to find there something for, of value for me. I expect to know what kind of organization it is. I expect to know okay, where they were registered, uh, what is the story, what kind of people work there, if it's a non-government organization uh, and I'm donating some money to this organization, I expect to know where this money was spent, uh, how much they collected, uh, what's the average amount of uh, money received, of donations received. So useful, transparent, value for all publics. And it's always nice when you can uh, leave your email and sign up for some updates and you'll receive them uh, on a regular basis. You don't have to go to that website every other day, uh, but you'll just receive them uh, either, either on your email, um, by your email subscription, subscription, or even when you like a page and you follow their uh, company on uh, the social media, you receive some updates over there as well. And the contact information, we already talked about it. Generation of return visits. Sites should include features to make them attractive for repeat visits. Updated information, changing issues, special forums, new commenters, online questions and answer sessions, consultants, etc. Explicit statement inviting users to return should be also included. Well, basically, when I come to the site, I see that something is going on over there. And if I come again, I want to see something else. That something happened over there, right? I'm not going to come to the site and see all the time the same things. There need to be something to be interesting for me to come again and again and again. So this is why information should be updated. This is why there should be interesting stuff going on. Exhibitions, events, new products, um, uh, some quality information in terms of how to use or how to fix the problem, how to use this, this product or, um, you know, something of value for me. Intuitiveness. Sites must be easy to use. It's sad, I think, if you click three times and you haven't found what you want, it's already too much. <laughs> so sites should be as easy as in three clicks a person has, has to find what they're looking for. They should be organized and hierarchical. There should be a site map, major links to the rest of the, to the, rest of the site, search engine box and a low reliance on graphics. Um, about low reliance on graphics, there are different um, thoughts, uh, but the reason for that, in internet is not working well everywhere, and if you come to the website and it's downloading too low, it takes eternity for the site to download, most likely you will never come back to the site again. So this is why um, uh, the site, uh, the website, any online information should be easily downloadable. It should be easy for you to use. Conservation of visitors. Websites should contain only essential links with clearly marked paths for visitors to return to their sites. Advertising should be put at the bottom of the pages, short loading time, and use of additional applications on the site. Well, when you go to the site and you see all this advertising just jumping onto you, you're just closing your eyes, closing the website, and you go and the site will never ever see you forever. Really, when the person comes, it should be like almost like coming home. Um, not um, uh, um, very interesting, very easy to use. Um, and uh, important thing to note here is that the links on your website, they shouldn't go and take you everywhere. They should actually let you be on that, um, on that site. Or if you open a page, uh, a link on your website, it should, it should open on another page on your web browser. Another, uh, um, otherwise, you can lose this person who came to you and was taken to somewhere else. <laughs> 